Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. We're back at the traumatic discotheque, but this time we've headed upstairs to the secondary floor for a better view of the secondary survey of a trauma patient. We covered the primary survey in its own sketch. Be sure to watch that first because the primary and secondary surveys often happen at exactly the same time, and sometimes in the space of just a few minutes. In the primary survey assessment, we left off at E, which involved exposing all of the patient so as not to miss any injuries. And this leads us directly into the head-to-toe physical exam, demonstrated by the uh, moves of our wild disco enthusiast here. Make sure to look in every nook and cranny on your patient to record all possible injuries. Some things to look for include fractures of the face and chest that indicate injury to underlying structures, like the eye or heart, peritonitis that suggests hemoperitoneum, long bone fractures and pelvic instability, vertebral step-offs or extremity motor and sensation deficits that indicate spinal damage, and CSF drainage, hemotympanum, or ruptured tympanic membrane as indicators of TBI. Next, get a streamlined history of the patient. Ample Ale is not only sponsoring this rooftop dance-off, but also a reminder of the mnemonic AMPLE for allergies, medications, past medical and surgical history and pregnancy, last meal, and events, which includes things leading up to and surrounding the trauma, like speeds, seatbelt use, height of falls, type of firearm, and secondary trauma, like drowning or electrocution, to help alert you to possible injuries. Much of this may come from paramedics or the patient's family. Imaging is next, and chest x-ray is crucial for diagnosing a number of life-threatening conditions. ASAP. So let's check in with the bouncer of this club who's sporting our recurring symbol for chest x-ray on his chest, the skull and crossbones. Notice those air holes in the bouncer's shirt? Hey, he just gets hot sometimes, okay? But really, air outside of the pleura indicates a pneumothorax. During the B for breathing assessment, we identified major life-threatening pneumothoraces, but x-ray will identify pneumothoraces that aren't as clinically obvious. Pneumomediastinum, or subcutaneous emphysema, as well as pneumothorax, can indicate injury to the tracheobronchial tree, which can be confirmed with bronchoscopy. And air under the diaphragm, or pneumoperitoneum, can indicate rupture of a hollow viscous in the abdomen, like bowel. Blood is another thing to look for on chest x-ray, represented by the pasta sauce dripping out of this guy's chest. Maybe it's time for a new shirt. Like pneumothorax, all but the largest hemothoraces can be missed during the initial breathing assessment, so check for blood in the chest that needs to be drained. Our bouncer also has an extra wide, broad chest to help you remember that a widened mediastinum suggests blunt thoracic aortic injury. And bowels in the chest indicate a ruptured diaphragm, which occurs more on the left because the right has the liver adding more support to the diaphragm. Just look at those intestiny noodles in that bowel, I mean bowl, held near the bouncer's chest. 